What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. So I have one of the front tires off of my X320 here that we keep in the shop. We're gonna go ahead and give this a change. Now, a lot of times guys will just snip off the valve stem to get started, but I like to go ahead and take out the core first, especially if it's a tire that I'm not sure what's gonna be inside of it. So I'm gonna take my core removal tool here and take out this valve stem first thing because if there is slime in this tire, once that air starts to release, you could get covered in it. So we're gonna take this out, start to hear that air release. All right, and just like that, you've got the air release from the tire. Now the next part is, is we've got to break the bead on this tire. And sometimes you can get a really good push on these and get that bead broken. But most of the time, what you're gonna wanna have is some tire working tools here. So what we're gonna do is put that in between the tire and the rim and start to push down and break this tire down off of that bead. You're definitely gonna wanna have multiples of these as it's gonna take you a few different spots here to really get this broken down. And once you kinda start to get this tire released from this upper part of the rim, get some of that air pushed out, you may be able to just push down with your hands and get this off, but it's a good idea to start here first. This is a slow job sometimes, guys, so you just gotta have patience. Try not to get too frustrated. This can be very frustrating as you're working these around. Just the whole job in general. So you gotta have patience when wanting to change your own tire here. All right, now once you've gotten that broken away from the rim, you saw I was able to push down on that tire. And we can continue to just push down. And now you can see that we have broken that first bead right there. Like I said, slow and steady. And as you can see right there on the inside of the rim, if I go inside here, we have had some slime in this tire before. So this is gonna get a little bit messy. Make sure to have some rags on hand. And then next it's time to move to the other side. Same job here, guys, getting that bead broken down. Like I said, slow and steady. Now this one should come just a little easier because we've already gotten the one side broken down off that bead, but you still, a lot of times on these older tires, especially ones that haven't been changed in a while, breaking this away from the very top edge of the rim is going to be the way to go also if you're doing this in colder weather these tires won't be as pliable so sometimes it's just a slow and steady job here all right and then just like that gotten that bead broken from the other side so now whenever we look at this tire we can see that we are broken off the rim here and off the rim here. So now it's time to just choose a side and start to remove that tire. Now, this is where your tire working tools are really gonna come into play here. What we're gonna wanna do is take our curved end and go in against that rim and then under that tire and just start to pop it up. Once we get one in there, we're gonna wanna go ahead and move over just a little bit, start to get our second spot here. Pop that over. And a lot of times it's gonna take three to get it to where we have one side over the rim, just like so. Once we have that, we can start to move this other one around the rim here until we get this tire completely up and over, just like that. And start to work this just around the other sides here. And then just like that, we've got that completely popped up and off of one side there. 
Now, keep in mind, right there is what a slimed rim is going to look like, any type of sealant in it. So once we get this rim completely off of this tire, we want to make sure and get this good and cleaned up. If we need to do any repainting, reconditioning, we want to do that while we have the rim off. So to start this next one, now we're going to go in curved side facing the tire. We're going to grab that rim and just start to pull up on it, just like so. Move in with our next one here. Same thing, we're just working these this rim up and out of our tire here. Now I know there are gonna be a lot of people out there that, that are saying, hey, you don't need these fancy tools to do this. You can do this with a flathead screwdriver. And that's probably true. You just have to be a lot more careful when doing it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my sleeves up here. Try not to get some of this slime on them. A lot easier to get that junk off of your skin than it is off your clothes. Now, the one thing too that I would say about your tire working tools is the longer the better on these. What I'm working with is a couple, or I have three of the 11 inch, more or less tire spoons here. And then I've got two of these 12 inch bars. Um, all of them are great, but a little bit longer tool is just gonna give you more leverage whenever we're talking about doing like I'm doing here and breaking this tire up over the rim. So keep that in mind whenever you're buying your tire tools, if you're buying your tire tools, if you're not gonna go the route of the flathead screwdriver, that more leverage is better when we're talking about working with this rubber. Now, once we get this up and over most of the tire, we can pull that out just like that, and then we're ready to go on with our new tire after we clean up that rim. Now, when we're cleaning up this rim, just a big flathead screwdriver or some kind of, kind of scraper, just go ahead and get all of this gunk scraped off. And then also, once you get this scraped off, it'd be a good idea that if you have any rust spots or anything like that, you could go ahead and hit this with a little bit of spray paint once you get this good and cleaned up. Now, once you get all the gunk scraped here, then we can come back with some brake and parts cleaner like we have here. Get that good and clean, dry it off, hit that with some spray paint, and then we're going to change the valve stem. All right, so once we've got that fairly clean, a lot of what you're looking for here is to making sure that you're getting your beads clean, which are right here on your wheel. This is where that tire is gonna make the seal. So you wanna make sure that these are good and clean. Those are all looking good. I didn't have any spots on mine. Yeah, there is still some residue here. Not enough, mainly to where I could see that I didn't have any rust. So we are gonna go with it here. Now, next is going to be taking off the valve stem. Now you can just pull these out, but a lot easier way to do it is to get yourself some cutters here and just try to cut this off right down here at the base. Cut that completely off just like that. Then come around here to the back side, and we're just going to pry this out. Now we'll go ahead, get our hole good and cleaned up right around it on both sides, making sure we're good to go. Then we're gonna take our new valve stem here. And what I like to do is put just a little bit of grease on that valve stem, makes that coming in just a little bit easier. We're gonna put that just around the edge here that is going to go in to the wheel. And once we pop that through, what we wanna do is we wanna take our valve stem removal tool. And here on the other side is the end that actually will screw on to the end of your valve stem. And we're gonna use this, get that on the thread so that we don't damage it with a pair of pliers or something and give this a pull. Kinda of have to give it a wiggle pull, twist it around, get it to seat down in that wheel. This is the safest way to go about getting your new valve stem in without damaging it. Because if we put pliers on it, there's a chance we could bend it, we could damage the valve core inside, all of those things. So we want to make sure and use the right tool when putting that valve stem in. So now we're down to the fun part. We've got our wheel ready to go. We've got our new valve stem in. We've got our new tire. So now it's time to get this rim back into this tire. So first thing we're gonna do, break out that good old soapy water. If you have tire lubricant, that's great. If not, some Dawn dish soap and water is going to work wonders for you. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and get this tire soaked up good here 
all the way around. I'm just gonna start the rim down in, give it a push. It should start to slide its way down and in. And we need to, we can start to take these tire tools, start to work it. Once we get it pushed good down and in, Sometimes these new tires can really be a pain, so you just gotta be patient. Work that lip up and over. Slowly but surely, keeping pressure on the wheel. Now, top side, first side is the easy one. Now, whenever we flip over here, now you're gonna to wanna to move to the floor because you're gonna to wanna to need to use your knee. And I've got another trick to show you here to make this a lot easier when you're doing it by yourself. All right, so once we've got this down here on the floor and a raise up on that tire, we are gonna get this rim nice and soapy. And we're also gonna get the outside of our tire soapy here. Now, whenever you first see this, I know that you're going to cringe. I cringe the first time I saw it too, but I'm telling you that whenever you're doing this by yourself, this will make your life a lot easier. As we can see, sometimes these tires are super pliable, sometimes they're not. This one is not so much. So what I'm gonna use to hold this tire still here to get started is a pair of ice grips. Now, we don't want these too tight to where we're gonna damage the rim. We just want it tight enough that it's gonna hold that tire in place while we are getting this started. Now, I've also figured here that using a second pair on the other side, along with your knee, is a good way to start here. Then we're gonna start with our tire tool, going just a couple inches away from our vice grips here till we can get around that edge. And we're just gonna start to work that lip up and over. Now, once again, slow and steady wins this race. This is not an easy deal. So we just want to have patience here. Getting this tire worked up and over. A lot of times you're going to want to have two of these tools and lots of patience. See, I'm working that around with my knee so I can get a better grip over here with my pair of vice grips. That's going to keep that tire in that position so that I can start to pull it over with my tire tools here. And as you start to get this worked on, you will be able to remove your vice grips. But this is a slow and steady, wins the race type of deal. And yes, he will probably break a sweat. But we've gotta be careful too. We don't wanna damage our rubber. We don't wanna damage our wheel. So lots of soap, lots of patience, slow and steady. Just like that, we've got her popped on there. Now, the next part is, is to getting air in this tire. Now, if you have a fairly stiff tire, fairly steady tire, a lot of times just putting air in this is going to pop that bead. If not, one of the tips that you can do is set this up on top and put your knee down in the center of it. A lot of times that will press that tire out to the bead on those wheels. If not, what you can do is you can take a ratchet strap or any other kind of strap put that around it, suck that tire down, that will put that against the bead, and then you can get your beads to set as well. So I'll go ahead and grab the air real quick. And the one thing that we're looking for here is we're looking for this tire to completely seat around the top and the bottom. And usually you'll hear a pop whenever this happens. All right, so there's one, there was one pop, 
And you can see there, we still need the bottom side to pop. And right there, it did it without me having to do anything. So now the next test, bounce test, make sure we're good to go. Then we just need to set our tire pressure to whatever our tire requires and get that back on the machine. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're needing any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.